All right, so here's something you may run into. Uh, let's say you're doing a search for images and you find an image, like in this case, I have an image that's made up of these different characters. I found the image, but it was just a single PNG file, so it wasn't something I could easily edit. You know, if it was an illustrated graphic, like an EPS file, I could break all the characters down into their own uh, separate components. But in this case, it was a PNG file, so it was a single image. It was hard for me uh, to work with. Uh, so what I wanted to do is make the image interactive. Like in this case, as I roll over a character, I can select the character. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that uh, using the cropping tool. So it's really simple. So I have a file here. The first thing I did is I went ahead and inserted um, our file. We'll just call it background. I'm going to copy this so we have a duplicate. I'm going to lock this so I don't accidentally move it. I'm going to paste the duplicate. And then you can see uh, the duplicates here. Now I want to make sure that the duplicates lined up. Um, and an easy way to do that is to actually line it up. Now you can see that that's not lined up. So I'm going to move this into place. Um, if you wanted to, you can use the uh, alignment tool here. And then you can select them both and align them. But I think this is aligned, so that looks good. So we've got this. We've got our background uh, locked up. We'll just call this our people image. So it's always important to title things when you're working with your e-learning tools just because um, it's easy to get confused if everything's like image one, image two. So we've got our image. Now what we want to do is create these multiple versions. So essentially what I want to do is be able to roll over the character and have uh, something happen. So um, we're going to go ahead and go to the state. We're going to select our image, go to the states tab. We're going to create a new state. We'll just do three of them so you can see how it works. So I'm going to create a new state. We'll call this first one Ted. So I'm going to edit states. I'm going to create a new one. We'll call it Ted. And uh, that's Ted here. Now we're going to go to the crop tool and select the crop tool. Now ideally, let's zoom in here. So ideally, I'm going to zoom in. Let's see if this works. And um, of course, the crop tool's not there for me. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll zoom in and zoom out. So I'm going to get this lined up, you know, perfectly. Um, we'll we'll pull this in here, um, and we'll just assume it's going to be lined up. Let me uh, let me zoom out here, um, and then we can come up here, and then I can zoom in to fine tune it. All right, we'll just we'll just say this is fine. You can see it's actually not fine, so I'm going to fix it just because it'll look weird. Okay, so um, this looks good. You can actually look up here and see that it's perfectly square, so it's 116 by 116. So it's always good to to know that because if you need to fix it, it's just easier to fix it sizing here than it is to try to nudge it. Okay, so we've got our first image, Ted. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that and we'll create Sally. So we've got Sally now. And because this is already lined up, so I've got my Sally image here, I'm going to go ahead and go to the crop tool again. And all I have to do is stretch this over here. And I don't even have to do anything with the uh, top image. You can see 116 by 116, so that worked perfectly. So I'm going to duplicate it again. We'll do Sarah. Um, go ahead and add that and then same thing. We're going to go make sure we're on Sarah. We're going to select the crop tool and we're just going to stretch this over. And um, I'm going to move this over here. And you can see this is a little off. So I'm going to go, oops, 160. Yep, there you go. We actually want this to be, um, you can come in here and let's turn off lock aspect ratio. Let's make this 116 by 116. Okay. And then we just need to make sure it's nudged into place. Um, oops, I'm nudging it the wrong way because I'm not using the crop tool. Um, so, okay. So we'll assume this is all good for the tutorial. It works fine. So I've got these three images. The problem is they're not interactive, right? So I want to make them interactive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Ted first. And it's really just about making this state different than the original state. 
So you could, in this case, let's say I'm going to resize it. So I'm just going to drag this image and resize it a little. And then, you know, if you want to, you can nudge it around so it's a little bit more centered. So I could resize it. And again, if I wanted to resize it, I have my sizing up here so I could be consistent. Let's say on Sally, we actually want to just add a picture effect. So we're going to add a glow, right? So we can do a glow. So we have a nice glow here. And that's a good way to represent a selected uh, image. And then on Sarah, we'll just do something. I notice I moved Sarah, so hopefully she's not off. Um, on Sarah, we'll go ahead. Let's just do a inset shadow, right? So that's kind of a popular type thing. So we've got an inset shadow, so it looks like it's selected. All right. So now we've got these three, and we can roll over them and see how that works. So now what we need to do is create a trigger to change them. So I'm going to zoom out. So what we're going to do is we'll select our image, right? And what do we want to do? We want to change the state of this image to Ted when I roll over Ted. The problem is I have a single image, so this is where I have to use the hotspot. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a hotspot, and I'm going to just drag him over Ted. And again, you want to get used to titling things, so we can. I'll just do. Ted HS for hotspot. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do my trigger first. So, what do I want this trigger to do, or this hotspot? I want to change the state of the people image to Ted when I roll over the Ted hotspot. So, let's go ahead and I can just double click on the trigger that the hotspot created. So, what do I want to do? I want to change the state of people to Ted when the user, and we'll say when the mouse is over, mouse is hovered over the Ted hotspot. And this is good for naming, right? Because you can see it's the Ted state, the Ted hotspot. So when you're looking at that, you can quickly see, you know, Ted, Ted. So you can see that it's doing that. The reason I did the first one, so now I just have to duplicate this. So I'm just going to click this and drag it. Control, I'm doing Control Shift to drag it and keep it lined up. So now I've got the Ted hotspot. So I'm actually going to change Ted to what were the names here? I forgot the names. Sally and Sarah. Okay. So we're going to change Ted hotspot to Sally hotspot and we'll change Sarah hotspot. Okay. So we've got Ted, Sally, Sarah. Now I'm going to come over here. And because I copied those triggers, it's just going to be really it's going to be really easy. So Sarah needs to connect to Sarah. Sally needs to connect to Sally. And now we should have a simple interaction where I roll over, and you can see you know there's a, increasing the size, the glow effect, and then here's the inset shadow. And you can do whatever. A lot of people would use like a black and white image, and then when you roll over the image turns uh, colored. So you can go from black and white to colored or colored to black and white. Um, so a lot of things you can do is just basically a matter of creating that state and then finding a way to make that state different than the original image. Hope that helps.